So when we first chatted with Dr. Valapur in 2021, uh, the transplant of patients with uh, respiratory failure due to severe COVID was just starting to make news. I believe it's become a bit more commonplace for post-infectious COVID patients to be candidates for lung transplantation. Has that been the experience at the Cleveland Clinic? I will tell you that in 2021, so immediately after uh, the pandemic, um, two new categories of diagnoses became um, prevalent in, as indications for transplant. So one was COVID ARDS, and the second was interstitial lung disease due to COVID. In 2021, um, one out of every 10 lung transplants were performed nationally for, uh, as a result of the uh, complications from COVID. Um, those numbers have come down now, um, but that was kind of the impact of the pandemic on, on the system. Also, the total number of transplants went down uh, during the pandemic, and we are now beginning to kind of inch our way back to pre-pandemic numbers. I think the, correct me if I'm wrong, Miriam, but I, I think the most recent publication from the most recent um, um, national data that there are almost 400 or so transplants that have been done for COVID-related uh, lung issues. Um, but we, but we um, so yeah, at the clinic, you know, we struggled during the pandemic, I think as most large lung transplant programs did on, on how to, to approach this and how to deal with this. So prior to the pandemic, um, essentially all lung transplant programs would decline uh, any patient for transplant who was in uh, a, a acute respiratory failure from ARDS or some sort of other etiology. Um, as we've discussed, uh, outcome long-term outcomes are, are still plagued by issues. Um, organ access is still difficult and plagued and we have you know more need than at least current utilization is uh, although many of us are working on ways of increasing the supply um, so we sort of saw patients who were acutely ill and very sick and ventilated as just being too risky to consider um, uh, proceeding with a lung transplant and obviously all that changed uh, with the pandemic and we, again, like many other lung transplant programs, I think struggled initially with how to approach this. Uh, uh, do we accept these patients? Do we not? If we do accept them, should we hold them to the same criteria that we hold ambulatory patients to? Um, um, uh, you know, ambulatory out of the hospital patients. Mm -hmm. um, our, in our hospitalized patients who are quite sick in general, our approach for a decade or more has been to try to ambulate them either on positive pressure ventilation or with ECMO support so that they're not deconditioned and those sorts of things. So, so our experience evolved uh, quite significantly here at the clinic. I think the first few patients, we probably persisted a bit too long in trying to get them ambulatory rather than transplanting more quickly. Um, once we made the decision that transplant was necessary, um, ultimately, we did, I believe, and this is a little bit off the cuff, but I believe ultimately we did about 18 uh, lung transplants uh, for ARDS-related COVID. Um, in, in general, I think our outcomes were comparable uh, to what's been described and what Dr. Valapur described, which is uh, essentially equivalent uh, to uh, to outcomes with uh, for other forms of fibrotic lung disease, which is what the national data show. Um, again, uh, there were cer certainly these are complex patients, very difficult. Um, the other scenario where a lung transplant is considered, as as Dr. Valapur mentioned, is in in uh, patients who have recovered from COVID but have post post COVID fibrosis. Um, we have clinics uh, established to evaluate such patients and follow such patients, not only for transplant, but our, our pulmonologist, Dr. Valapur, and others do in general. Uh, so far, we've only done a couple of transplants uh, under those conditions, but, but those have all uh, gone quite well. But I think we, like many other large volume lung transplant programs in the United States, are, are, are certainly willing to consider these patients and and uh, uh, for transplantation to uh, to help them. Do you, do you know if there's any literature, you kind of anticipated my next question, literature around post-COVID transplant patients developing or having had long COVID, which may impact their rehabilitation, their 
exercise level. Um, has that been something that's been studied in lungs? I could find very little in the literature about uh, long COVID in these transplant patients. Yeah, I, I don't know of any, um, Al. I don't know if you do, Miriam. So I will, I will say that there is not much literature yet. So the pandemic occurred in 2020 and very quickly after that, uh, we um, developed, kind of included these diagnoses in the transplant registries to start capturing the experience. I will say it will probably be years um, before we know what the long-term outcomes of this patient population is. Mm -hmm. But at least we started capturing it within months of the onset of the pandemic. I, I will add, if you don't mind, Dr. Rizzo, sure. that I, I think, you know, at least on an individual program basis, you know, we're all well aware uh, of the impact of deconditioning, as I'm sure you and your audience mm -hmm. are, on, on surgical outcomes in general, and in particular with, with lung transplantation. So certainly the rehab part of, of what you mentioned is very, very important. And, uh, um, and uh, we and others, you know, work quite hard to pre, uh, rehab uh, our patients. So patients who come to us already with chronic lung disease, uh, who uh, we, we work hard to try to get them strong before the transplant. And then obviously, at, at least in that acute period afterwards, um, work quite hard to uh, continue through rehab, but uh, but I don't know the long-term implications of COVID there. 